The name of the Japanese city of Hiroshima came to symbolise the power, might and the horror of atomic weapons. The nuclear blast on that ordinary Monday morning destroyed the once bustling port and accelerated the end of the Second World War. Andrew LeBentz tells us more. The 6th of August 1945. A US bomber called Enola Gay dropped a nuclear device called Little Boy over the city of Hiroshima. Around 140,000 people were killed. Three days later, a second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. Within two weeks, the Japanese surrender ended the Second World War. A minute's silence breaks the moment the bomb hit Hiroshima. Survivors and relatives gathered in the city's peace park on the 75th anniversary of the bombing. Memorial events were scaled back this year because of the coronavirus pandemic. Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe laid a flower wreath. The country's wartime experience has led to a strong pacifist movement and a commitment to a nuclear-free world. Hiroshima Mayor Kazumi Matsui was the first to make an address. We must never allow this painful past to repeat itself. Civil society must reject self-centered nationalism and unite against all threats. The Prime Minister renewed his commitment to keeping Japan nuclear free. Our nation will firmly maintain the three non-nuclear principles, serving as a bridge to countries with different positions. By persistently urging discussion and action by each country, Japan will take the lead in the international community's efforts towards the realization of a world without nuclear weapons. Survivors have urged world leaders to visit Hiroshima and see the reality of the atomic bombing. Andrew Lentz, Euronews. Dr. Robert Jacobs is a social historian of nuclear technologies at the Hiroshima Peace Institute. He says the best way to honour those who were killed is to eliminate the risk of something like this happening again completely. The world has barely learned any lessons from this at all. Uh, after 1945, uh, many, many countries pursued nuclear weapons. Tens of thousands of nuclear weapons were built. 2,000 nuclear weapons were tested, which harmed the health of lots of people who lived near the test sites. And we have spent the last 75 years living at risk, all of us in the world, of uh, harm from nuclear weapons. So uh, what we learned was the amount of damage that they can do. And since then, we have all been put at risk. So uh, the world really has not learned any lessons from Hiroshima and Nagasaki yet. How much, uh, well, I guess, how present now are sort of the marks of that event on particularly the Japanese psyche today? Well, it's it's different in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and in the rest of the Japan in the rest of Japan. It's it's very present in Japan altogether, uh, as as was the fire bombings, memories of the fire bombings, and the way that other people suffered. But in Hiroshima, here in Hiroshima and in Nagasaki, uh, these are defining events. These cities really are very much defined by that. Uh, here in Hiroshima, uh, the, a lot of the tourism is focused on people coming to the Peace Park and to the Peace Museum uh, to visit the a -bomb Dome. And in the city, there's constantly a focus on finding ways to work towards nuclear abolition. And this is what children learn in school from a fairly early age, is that as as citizens of Hiroshima, it's partly their duty to help try to rid the world of nuclear weapons. And so today, uh, many people will be remembering what's happened. How should that take place in your eyes? Well, there's several pieces. Uh, first and foremost, we should remember the people that died and the people that were injured uh, and people that lost family members, because above all things, this was a personal experience that people directly experienced. Um, but the other way to remember it is to understand what weapons of mass destruction do and that their use against civilian populations is never an acceptable thing. So to pursue nuclear armaments to the degree that the nuclear weapon states in the world have uh, is, is to ignore those lessons. One of the best ways to remember it is to remove that risk from facing people in today's world.